Okay, friends, welcome back. So we are on to our last budget meal this week. We are going to be making some homemade pizza, and we're using basically things we have on hand in our pantry. We are still doing the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. And I was going to show you guys this bacon. This is something we keep in our cabinet, and this is what I bought at Sam's Club. It's a pretty big bag here. You can see 20 ounces, and... It has a very long shelf life on it. We just opened it a few weeks ago. We've had it in there for like four months. And it's still got a very long shelf if you don't open it. Now what we do once we open these to kind of stretch it out a little bit. We'll go ahead and freeze half of the bag. Because we can't get through this before it would go bad once it's opened. Because we cook fresh bacon as well. But this is great to throw in salads or casseroles or recipes like this we'll be adding it onto our pizza so if you guys haven't seen this it's a really good thing to keep on hand for future use so we have some of our crushed tomatoes here they're fire roasted I'm going to be using this as the sauce I'm going to season that up and then some home canned sausage here this is some of my oldest stock that I have and I need to get it used up if you're wondering what that is that's just fat this is completely good and edible here. So we're going to be doing two different kind of pizzas with this. They're going to have totally opposite flavors, but we're going to be using the same ingredients, um, not the sauce on one of them. I'm going to be making a sausage and bacon pizza with one of them with a traditional marinara type sauce, but the other one we're going to be making a breakfast style pizza, and that's going to have some gravy as a sauce and then um, bacon and some eggs on that and maybe some of that sausage as well and then it's going to have cheese on it like I think I'm going to use the gouda on there that'll be good so anyway we're going to get into making this pizza dough we have two and a half cups of flour back here we have two cups of no one cup of warm water sorry I usually double this recipe but we're sticking with one dough recipe here we have one cup of warm water this is not hot but you need it to be warm so you can bloom your yeast in this and we're going to be using two and one fourth teaspoons of yeast this is active yeast and we have one teaspoon of salt one teaspoon or two teaspoons of honey this is going to help our yeast bloom as well and then two tablespoons of our olive oil here. So I'm trying to make sure I don't step on the dog over here if you wonder what I'm looking at. So we're going to get this whipped up and then I'll show you what we do with that. Okay, I just recorded something and it totally disappeared. So I don't know what happened here, but I was actually showing you guys that my yeast and water mixture was ready to go in. It was nice and foamy on the top. And then I poured it in here and mixed it with a spoon. And I was kneading the dough and realized something went wrong with my camera. So anyways, that's what you want to do. You want to mix in your water and all that stuff and knead your dough. I've added the olive oil in here and I've added a little bit to my hand to keep it from being so sticky on me. Hopefully you guys can see this. Hopefully it doesn't shut off like it did. But once we get this kneaded for just a few minutes, we're going to get this put up in here in our... I've preheated my microwave for five minutes just to get it nice and warm in there. Not hot, but warm. And I'm going to put it in the microwave to proof for at least 30 minutes it's better if you can go an hour but sometimes we don't always have that time so we're going to get it up here and get it proofing okay our dough has risen so i'm gonna get this divided up 
into two. Just gonna split it. I've got a little bit of extra flour here so I can handle this because it's a little bit sticky. And that's okay. I'm going to put the other one aside for right now. The first one we're going to work with is going to be our breakfast pizza. I'm going to try to shape it out into a little bit of a circle and then we're going to flatten it down. All right, I've added a little bit more flour on top here. I'm going to finish pressing it out once I get it in my pan. I'm just getting it started over here. And we have guineas outside making noise again. Okay. And I'm going to transfer this along with its parchment paper because this pan I'm using has got a little bit of rust in it. So we're going to use that in this one. I just want to get this stretched out to where it fills up this pan. I know it's a little bit harder to see because of the parchment, but you just want to press it down. Press it and stretch it just a little bit. Just don't get it too thin. And if you want a little bit of an edge, just kind of push it up along that wall of your pan. Okay, now we've got our dough ready and we are using a gravy for this breakfast pizza as the sauce. This is some leftover gravy I had. This, by the way, is a great meal to make out of your leftovers to do a leftover makeover so you don't waste food. If you have some leftover sausage or bacon and have any leftover gravy or you can make some with the grease that you had left out of that stuff you're good to go so we're just going to spread this out on here my son thinks he's being funny over here in the background so if you hear a little tooty noise that's him <laughs> real life yes. okay yeah that's him giggling in the background I'm gonna get this as even as I can I'm not leaving a whole lot of the actual crust uncovered on the edges that way it doesn't get wasted I like the crust on pizza, but some people don't. Okay. I've heated our sausage up enough to melt the grease in there. And I've pressed as much out as I can get out. So we're going to start laying this on here. Spread it out. Okay, we've got that mostly covered. I'm going to add on our bacon now. a good amount of bacon on here. Oh, we've got dogs barking too. <laughs> okay, now we have our bacon on here. Sorry about all the noise in this video, guys. We've It's a busy day right now. We're trying to get prepared for the really cold weather that's coming. Uh, we're supposed to be below freezing for several days, and we've got to make sure that everything's prepped so we don't have water leaks again. That first leak we had wasn't because of that, but we don't want to go through that anymore so I'm adding on this gouda right here 
You can use any kind of cheese for this. Cheddar is really good also. And then we're going to get this in the oven at 425 for anywhere from 14 to 17 minutes, depending on your oven. I'm going to save a little bit of a little bit of this cheese for the next pizza. We're going to be using some goat cheese on that pizza next as well. We're working with that five pound block that I got from Azure. It's a white cheddar goat cheese. So we're getting this in the oven now and then we'll work on our next pizza. Y'all aren't going to believe this, but I forgot an ingredient, a very important one, scrambled eggs. So we're just going to add these on here and then we're going to add a little bit more cheese. I did go light on the cheese anyway, so that's fine. We have plenty of that goat cheese to use on the other pizza, so this is just going to actually make it a little bit better with the additional cheese. It seems like in many of my videos lately I have had some sort of distraction going on. And I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when it's real life and you're recording. Okay. Now it looks right. <laughs> so now this is going in the oven. All right, now I've just added about enough in here of that can of fire roasted crushed tomatoes to make our sauce. The rest of it I'm probably gonna throw into a recipe this week. We're just gonna simply season this with some garlic salt. There is no salt in this stuff, so it definitely needs salt. Add just a little bit more. I probably added about a half a teaspoon in there so far. It needs a little bit more. You can season that to taste. Okay, that's good. And parsley. A little bit of sweet basil leaf. Two nice pinches of that. Just a little bit of olive oil. For the final ingredient in here, I've added just a little drizzle of this balsamic vinegar. That sounds weird, but it really does accentuate the taste of the tomatoes in here. So now we're going to get this one started. We have our dough. Hopefully you guys can see that. Maybe you need to back you up just a little bit. There you go. And it really depends on you how much sauce that you're wanting on your pizza. Some people like a lot, some people don't. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the sausage. Get that added on here. And yes, this was breakfast sausage. You can use that on an Italian flavored pizza. It usually is not so strongly seasoned that it's going to interfere with what seasoning you, seasonings you usually use on that Italian flavored pizza. They do sell Italian pork sausage though in the store. So definitely if you want to use that, get that. Now 
we're going to add on some of our bacon. I'm going to go a little bit lighter on this piece of with the bacon. But still enough to enjoy. Now if you make that breakfast pizza, you can, if you have little kids that you're just trying to feed, you can cut that up for the week and spread it out. And it'll last in the fridge for at least five days if you've used the fresh ingredients. Okay. Now I'm going to add on some Parmesan, shredded Parmesan. And then our shredded goat cheese. Yummy. So that's what that one looks like. Let's see. There we go. Now you guys can see. Delicious. Good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Our other pizza is finally finished. We're going to get this transferred onto our cutting board and I'm trying to keep doing it this way so I don't mess up this pan <laughs> there's no cut marks on this I want to keep it that way That's what it looks like on the inside. Also very delicious. Alright friends, we're going to enjoy our pizza. I hope you have a great night or day, whatever. I love you all and I will see you again soon. Bye friends.